to viewers in Scotland. We'll leave us now for Sunday Politics Scotland. Coming up here in 20 minutes, the week ahead. First though, the Sunday Politics, where you are. Hello and welcome to Sunday Politics in Northern Ireland. He's balanced his flagship projects to the east and west of the ban, but the demands continue for investment. The Infrastructure Minister, Chris Hazard, is with us. Plus, the battle over regeneration powers and who should control them has led to some bitter accusations against Stormont. The boss of the organisation, which represents all the councils here, tells us what it means for local government and for ratepayers. And giving us their thoughts on those issues and more, Chris Donnelly and Felicity Houston. Hey, let's hear from our commentators, uh, Felicity Houston and Chris Donnelly. Uh, Chris Donnelly, what do you make of that? Um, a lot on the table for consideration. Yes, I mean, I think this comes back to the fact that Sinn Féin decided to take the infra infrastructure ministry because they saw an opportunity to advance key signature programmes that really allowed them to address a delivery deficit, which has detrimentally impacted upon nationalist confidence, both in Stormont and the ability of Sinn Féin to deliver through through Stormont. I think we see that in the nationalist turnout, which has been declining. They see the A5 and the A6 as a massive prize, which allows them to say that we have delivered through the Fresh Start Executive. And you could hear it in, in Chris Hazard. He's very clearly, those are the two priority programmes. And in the time ahead, he would hopefully be able to show that we are going to move towards construction beginning on both of those, which opens up the North West. And Felicity, and Felicity, I mean, the point is, of course, as well, well, while that would perhaps benefit people who support Sinn Féin, it doesn't benefit everybody, let's be absolutely clear about it. It's not just nationalists who will benefit from the opening up of the West. Oh, no, I mean, obviously the mixed community lives out there, so it should be a benefit. But, I mean, there, you know, Chris said that nationalists have lost sort of faith in the ability of the government to, d to deliver, but I don't think so. I think the whole population has, you know, and yet again it's not happening. I mean, I can think of the Belfast Rapid Transport Programme that has supposedly been planned for the area I live in, and I've been living there 40 years as a young girl, I remember this plan, and it still hasn't happened. And, you know, again, why on earth isn't there a proper motorway to Derry? There isn't, and it's still not happened. And I think, you know, if any of these things actually get built, well, people will be astonished, and it will be a great achievement if the Minister manages it, but I think most of us won't expect it. Well, I'll just go back to the Minister on that point. Uh, can you give any reassurance to Felicity Houston that that rapid transit system yeah. from her part of Belfast, which is East Belfast, is any nearer to happening? Absolutely. You know, and I will be launching that project in 2018. We've just tendered the vehicles. I have seen some of the design work. It's something we're pushing ahead with. And that's only phase one, of course, linking west and east of the city. We then need to look at south and north also, because we need to realise that's the type of system that's going to tackle with congestion. We can't build our way out of the congestion problems in Belfast. We only have to look around Europe. They've spent billions trying to do that, and they've just built concrete jungles. We need innovative ways in the Rapid transit is one of those particular ways. Okay, all right. Um, Minister, thanks very much indeed. We'll hear more from both of you a little bit later in the programme for now. Thanks very much indeed. Now, um, let's uh, take a look back at uh, the week, one of those uh, weeks dominated by a particular party, of course, in 60 seconds with Gareth Gordon. In the run-up to World AIDS Day, an MLA thanked a charity for enlightening him over HIV. For me, that was a turning point for someone who was ignorant to the fact of this terrible disease that heterosexual people can have it also. Possibly the only time Trevor Clark and Elton John will appear in the same story. A Northern Ireland politician said the other day he didn't know that heterosexual people could get AIDS or HIV. So it's like, what? planet are you living on? And Sammy Wilson's claim that other diseases are more deserving of public attention brought a rare rebuke from a party colleague who revealed someone close to her has HIV. I believe that it wouldn't have been that difficult to wear the red ribbon um, in support. I don't believe that would, would have been difficult for anyone to do. Complaints that no Northern Ireland stars were on the shortlist for the BBC Sports Personality of the Year. Just one of the things the First Minister found hard to swallow this week. We no doubt will be eating some of the fare from China, uh, things we do for Ulster. Interesting question. Thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us, Derek McCallan. Let's have a final word with uh, Felicity and Chris. Chris, what do you make of that? Is, is, is there a real tussle for control between Stormont and the 11 local councils? 
I don't think it's between Stormont and the 11 local councils. I think in this case it's between the DUP specifically. We saw last year that Mervyn Story as Minister was reluctant to move on the regeneration bill. Now, obviously, it's confirmed by Paul Given, his party colleague, that they want to hold the power with, with the ministry at Stormont. And I think the issue there is the DUP want to keep control because if it is ceded out to the 11 local councils, then obviously some of those councils are majority nationalists, some have no outright majority. The DUP would like to keep it centralised because then they can have a role in strategically developing it. And I think there's, there could be grounds for friction to develop with Sinn Féin over that because clearly Sinn Féin don't agree. Um, Felicity, how do you see it? Well, it's one of those things, I mean, I thought this was just going ahead and then suddenly the minister announces, no, the councils aren't getting it. I mean, I think anything, it could strip out unnecessary levels of bureaucracy in something like regeneration has to be beneficial. And you know, if we're going to have local councils that actually do anything, the whole point of the reorganisation was that the councils would actually have roles now, proper, realistic ones, and they're taking away this power from them, which... I hoped might have been quite successful because, yes, although we're a very small country, we're also extremely parochial and everybody knows their own turf. Well, I mean, and that, that's the point. And, and Deb McCann talks about Swansea and Glasgow and mm. Merthyr Tidful, but Northern Ireland is a small place. Okay. A lot of people would say that if you want to compare like with like, you should be comparing Stormont with Swansea, Glasgow and Merthyr Tidful rather than the 11 local councils. But it has all the paraphernalia of a real government. I mean, this is the problem with Stormont. It thinks itself to be a real government and has all the nonsense of all that. And so things move at the at glacial speed there would be a possibility if it weren't done at local level that things could move on it's like what we were talking about with the roads once again look at ilex absolute disaster up in Derry of a great project run by two government departments and it didn't work i think it flies in face of the logic of reorganizing our local government from 26 councils down to 11 which was about trying to make them larger to give them powers uh, where they could be credibly uh, devolved powers so that they could deliver on the ground because they are closer. And that, I think, is the strongest argument that Derek and Nilga have in this regard. Mm. Well, it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out because there can't be two winners. No. There can't be two winners. Do you think that at the end of the day, Paul Given will end up in control of it? I think he's going to at the moment, uh, but I do think over time it is something that Sinn Féin will want to see and the other parties move to, to the local government councils. OK, all right. Thank you both very much indeed. Uh, that is it for now, but we can't finish the programme without paying tribute to our former colleague Austin Hunter, who's died suddenly and whom we remember with great affection. Many fitting and well-deserved tributes have been paid to him in the past few hours, and we're thinking about his family, and in particular his son Simon, who's an important part of our team. Back to Andrew in London. From all of us, bye-bye. Thank you.